Hi, good morning everyone. I hope you had a great Sunday. Well, today I want to talk about dieting. <clears throat> you know, there are just too many people still trying to follow the wrong diet and the wrong concept of losing weight. Well, we've had loads and loads of diets over the last few, year, few years and so many people have tried so many different diets. Well, today I want to tell you that eating less and exercising more is absolutely the worst way to lose weight. You may lose a couple of pounds, a couple of kilos initially, but then it's guaranteed, and I'm telling you it's guaranteed that you will put all that weight back on again. And I know this because you know, half the clients I get have experimented with 10 or 15 diets in their lifetime, including the eat less and exercise more diet, and that's the one which brings them all back at some point, saying that, oh, my diet didn't work. Because today, I wanna to tell you one thing, and I want you to pay attention to this very, very clearly. Your body does not care about your size zero ambition that you have or your six pack ambition that you have. Your body does not care about you having a flat stomach. <clears throat> your body doesn't care about how much weight you have to lose according to the goal that you hold in your head. Your body cares about one thing, which is survival. Your body needs nutrients and energy from the food that you eat for survival. And if any of this is compromised, even, even a little bit, even if it's not getting that one nutrient that billions of cells in your body needs, it goes into famine mode, which is stress mode. And there is no way you're losing weight. Yes, you can force your body to lose weight initially. You can force your body with intensive workouts, with strict dieting, restricted calories, and you will lose two, three, maybe four, maybe five kilos. And then you put it all back on again. You look older, you've lost hair, your skin changes. People say, hey, you're looking weak. What diet are you on? And you start aging rapidly. That's because you cannot lose weight by eating fewer calories. We need to move our focus from calories to nutrients. We need to move our focus from calories to the right nutrition. You see, every time you cut down your calories, you restrict yourself from calories, you're depriving your body of certain nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that it needs to further break down carbohydrates, fats, and protein. How do you think the body burns fat? Fat burn requires a lot of energy <clears throat> to burn. If you're going on a restricted diet and cutting down energy to your body in terms of calories, where does your body get energy to burn calories? Your body requires energy for your liver function, your kidney function, your heart, your blood flow, your hormonal balance, your brain function, your digestion, your digestive system, elimination. That's what your body requires energy for. And if you're going on a restricted diet and putting less energy in your system because you're eating lesser food, guess what? Your fat's not gonna have enough of energy it requires to burn. Fat requires a considerable amount of energy to burn. So right now, restrictive diets don't work. The next question in your mind is, oh, I have lost weight because I reduced my calories. Well, let me tell you one thing right now. Most people eat more food than their bodies require because we eat too fast, we eat mindlessly, we eat with distractions of TVs and iPads, we eat during meetings. So we're never really focused on how much our body really needs and we eat more than we require. Why, why two rotis? Why one, you know, why one bowl of rice? Why not two? Why not half? We don't know that. We've just become accustomed to the portions that we think is right for our body. So sometimes when people reduce their calories or eat a little bit less, they start losing weight. But it's not because, it's not because they've gone below their calorie restriction. It's because they were overeating. So even today, if you're overeating and you just start eating, how much your body requires, you will lose weight. You don't have to undereat to lose weight because we all know by now, undereating is bad for your metabolism. When you reduce the calories and energy to your body, your metabolic activity gets impacted. When you have less calories and less nutrients for your body, your thyroid gland starts producing less thyroxine. You don't need to be a hypothyroid patient. You could be producing less tyroxine because you're on a restricted diet, because you're eating less food. And to make matters worse, we reduce our calories and we exercise more. That's the worst combination for your metabolic rate. 
So your, when you exercise more, you need to replenish your body with the energy it requires through food. You cannot exercise more and eat less and starve your billions of cells, which in turn impacts your metabolic rate, which is why you can force a little bit of weight off your body by punishing yourself with exercise and eating less or going on a restricted diet. But eventually your body will kick back and put on more and more weight. And it's the ugly weight. It's that fat that you'll see in your abdominal area, your love handles, on the back of your thighs, in the form of cellulite, under your arms. That is your body telling you that you have a very, very poor metabolic function. So you cannot force your body to lose weight. We need to move more on to, let, let's start for example, how do you put on weight? If you want to put on weight, you eat more and you exercise less. Now to lose weight, you eat more and you exercise more. So you eat more calories and eat more, exercise more is basically the athlete mode of training. Athletes eat more and they exercise more. They also rest more, but that's a whole different subject. They recover more, they sleep more. So if you want the body of an athlete, if you want to lose weight the right way, you eat more and you exercise more. And on the days where you cannot exercise, you eat less when you exercise less. If you can master these two models, so there are days that we cannot work out. We're too busy or we're traveling or our work. So on those days, you move into mode two, which is eat less on the days that you cannot exercise. And on the days that you can really have an intensive workout and a full workout, you eat more. And that's how you lose weight, not by struggling, but by building a strong metabolic rate, which in turn helps you lose weight without a struggle. If you are struggling to lose weight today, you are doing it wrong. If you are doing a few things and making a few lifestyle changes and automatically seeing the weight come off, you're doing it the right way. All you need to do is be a little bit patient because you cannot force the body to lose weight according to the timeline that you have in your mind. That is your mind. That is your belief. That is your attitude. Your body doesn't care about it. There is nothing you can do to change the metabolic rate in your body. All you can do is support it with the right things and make it simple. So again, <clears throat> on days that you cannot exercise, you automatically eat less. And the days that you can exercise more, you eat more. So there are a lot of people who may not be able to work out Monday to Friday. And I have a lot of those clients and they fall in the categories of doctors and very, very, very busy, busy people. They cannot exercise Monday to Friday because they're on a flight every day of the week. So they eat less on those days. And on the weekend, they have two intensive workouts for one hour each, Saturday and Sunday. But they also increase their calorie intake on those two days so that they're able to build lean mass, build muscle mass, which in turn helps them maintain a high metabolic rate. So again, let me tell you, eat less on days that you cannot work out. If your workouts are less, eat less. And the days that you can have intensive workouts, eat more. But you have to break that belief system, that attitude in your mind right now, that if I eat less and I exercise more, I will burn more calories. Maybe on your treadmill, the algorithm, the number that you see, you will, but in your body, you will not. And I know a lot of you out there who are doing this right now, eating less and exercising more, thinking you can punish your body into weight loss. You lose a few kilos and then you put it all back on again. So you need to understand that the human body works this way. When you can burn more calories through more exercise, you eat more food so that your body has enough of nutrition and enough of nutrients to increase your metabolic rate, which further burns fat for you. And eat less on days that you cannot. So now you need to be mindful about the way you start your day and break away from this mindset and this routine that I'll eat less and exercise more and think you're going to lose weight. It does, it does not work that way. Good nutrition and good dieting is about enhancing your diet, not about removing. It's so easy for all of us to tell you, stop sugar, stop this, reduce your oil, reduce your carbs and you lose weight. Yes, you will, but you will never correct your behavior and lifestyle that is causing you to put on weight. The idea is, what more can I add to my diet so that I can support my billions of cells and my metabolic rate to help me burn weight? And I want to end this talk with a simple example of junk food and why <clears throat> we tend to eat so much. 
we have no control over our cravings when it comes to junk because all those food designers, all those food companies, they make sure that they don't build a satiety factor in their food, which means they strip your food of fiber so that the product doesn't help you feel full, so that you go on eating more, eating more, eating more, you get addicted to it, and then you buy more of those products. So you open a packet of chips, you can't stop at one, you'll finish the packet of chips because it doesn't have a satiety factor built in. In fact, it's got two ingredients, which is salt, sugar, and trans fats, which basically suppresses leptin, which is a hormone, which is your satiety hormone. Anything that suppresses leptin will make you eat uncontrollably. And it also increases your ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. But look at an apple. Can you overeat an apple? Can you overeat an avocado? Can you overeat nuts and seeds? No, because it's got fiber. It's got everything that increases leptin, your, leptin, which is your satiety hormone. So that's the difference between natural food and junk food. Junk food is planned to make you eat more. It is planned to suppress your hormones, which makes you have more cravings. Whereas if there's anyone out there who can overeat on junk, you know, on natural food, I'd like to meet you personally because you can't. Natural food is built with everything to signal to our brains just exactly how much we need. So everyone out there, please, if you've been on this struggle, it should not be a struggle for you to lose weight. If you're giving your body everything it needs to balance your hormones, keep your cells in place, keep your cells happy and nourished and energized, you know, you will automatically start losing weight. You need to look into your lifestyle and you need to break away from this mindset of eat less and exercise more. That is a model which is going to make you fail, which is going to make you age faster, which is going to make your hair fall, which is going to make a 30-year-old woman or man look like 45 or 50 or 60. It's going to make you rapidly age. Keep it simple. Eat more, exercise more. On the days that you can't, eat less when you have to exercise less. Do not punish your body into losing weight. It just doesn't work that way. The more you force your body to lose weight, the more your body will put on weight. Have a good day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Have a good day.